Howdy peeps and uh, welcome back to the channel and the ongoing dra well, drama and epicness of the build series for the SU-76. It's going on to well, considerably more episodes than I had first envisaged. Um, so if you're still with me, thank you very much. I've got totally lost count of where we got to episode wise and it might be 15, 16, somewhere around there. We'll try and get it done in around 20 um, and we pretty much just got the weathering to go now. So what have I been up to in my absence other than bashing at the camera? Well I made a start on the pin wash and obviously well First of all, let's zoom in a bit so we can see a bit closer. Oh, smack the camera about again. Here we go. And there we are. As you can see, we've got the rest of the tools all painted up, the second coat's on, and I gave a coat of null oil on all the metal work. And on the main vehicle itself, I've put the pin wash on which is an, an old bottle of MIG dark wash uh, just an enamel wash nothing out of the ordinary and I've applied that over a well cured coat of aqua gloss uh, which is that stuff and it's one of those few occasions where it says on the bottle, do not shake. Don't, because otherwise you don't get a nice gloss finish. So what I'll do today is I will show you how I apply the wash onto the gun. Because I figured you didn't want to see two sort of episodes of me just applying the wash onto the tank. So I'll apply the wash on the gun and take it off, or take off the excess on the tank. There's a few ways I do that and we'll get round to those as we go. So I'll zoom you back out again for a little while. Ooh, there we go, there we go, there we go. That'll do. And as you can see from the state of the uh, kitchen towel, I have been painting something red. More on that later. So because what we're going to be doing now is nasty, manky, grubby and grimy. I'll get nice shiny new cutting mat out of the way and break out old manky one. Also with it being darker it should uh, cause less whiting out or less colour issues. I'll keep bashing that bloody camera. <clears throat> Let me see if I can move across a little. There we go. That's better. All right. First job, give the wash a good shake. These enamel washes do have a tendency to settle quite badly. And some of them you'll even need to shake as you're using them. They will settle as you go. All depends on the amount of um, pigment etc in them. Now to answer a question that gets asked fairly regularly which is what colour wash do I use? The general answer is a darker tone of what the paintwork is. And that applies for aircraft in the main. For tanks as they're going to be mucky, grubby, grimy it tends to be a browny, scummy, nasty colour. In this case, I generally use, I say this, which is the dark brown. And we're using a relatively small brush, hopefully with a semi decent point on it. The better the point, the more accurate the application of the wash. And a quick dunk. Now we don't have to be too careful how we apply this because we will be wiping off any excess we literally just add it so that it runs around all the raised or sunken detail so bolts, rivets, panel lines little crevices, all that kind of good stuff 
and it just so so I'm not a fan of the phrase but it does just make the details pop out that little bit um, as I say this is it's not the most entertaining thing to do or watch but I decided long ago when I started this build that I would show every step of the way so that's what I'm going to do now once I've done with this I'm thinking I'm going to do a plain one as well because I've actually quite enjoyed this um, so I'm doing a plane that will involve some photo etch filling um, and some, just some general different techniques especially when it comes to painting and weathering so I'm afraid there will be probably considerably more airbrushing to listen to but I hope we'll deal with that when we get to it it'll be a while yet especially before anyone sees any because I'll make sure I've got all the build series up for this finished before I even think about that and so I'm just going around picking out every panel line every rivet bolt recess raised piece of detail anything also I'm not going to bother with the bottom surface of the gun and to be fair the majority of the gun isn't visible anyway so I could probably get away without doing it but for the sake of completion I will just check am I actually doing it in shot yes I am as I say it's not tricky to apply it's not tricky to clean off either um, so don't worry if you get excess where you don't necessarily want it So especially with the enamel washes or if you decide to use an oil wash and I might show you those in another video of some such you got a clump of pigment stuck in the brush that's better um, and all an oil wash is it's pretty much the same thing it's just with heavily thinned down oil paints then with your choice of solvent so it'd either be oh, well most people tend to use one of the odor free like the is it the Mona Lisa or the uh, um, oh what's it called what's it called Windsor Newton Sans Odor um, because uh, some people A don't like the smell of white spirits or mineral spirits if you're American um, it can give some people headaches it's not a problem for me um, as I said I, before I can't smell anything so to me this smells exactly the same as bacon I it has no smell whatsoever and I think that will do for putting a wash onto the gun with there's not a huge amount of detail on that so we'll pop that to one side to dry wipe the excess wash out of the brush and with any of these bottles I'll say the these old MIG ones aren't too bad but if you're using the especially the AK kind of ones the round bottles oh, that's a pigment <laughs> joy Let's grab that one. The ones like these, they are very easy to not quite tighten and then when you shake them it goes everywhere. And uh, you might get in trouble, let's put it that way. Right. A little pot of uh, 
a stronger brush cleaner to get nasties out of the brush. If it's just acrylics, I use water generally. But that's enamel base, that's so I think it's part white spirit, part UMP thinner and cleaner. I think there's a bit of cellulose thinner in there as well. <laughs> Surprised it doesn't melt the brush to be honest. So we get back to tanky poo. Oh, I'm going to have to reach around the front. Oh, just about out of shot. And there are several ways we can clean up an enamel wash. Um, the way most will do it, involve, as I say, it involves the white spirits to clean it off. I find if you don't let it dry completely, I mean, this has probably been on at the first parts I did just over an hour, um, maybe an hour and a quarter, something like that. Obviously, if you leave it overnight you and it completely dries, you will need to use a little white spirit or... Ooh, where's my bottle? I'll get some out just in case. Or your low odour stuff, whichever it may be. I'll grab a little pot. Pop a little white spirit in it. And do this away from the model so that we don't accidentally spill white spirits on our model kit. Because that would be fairly disastrous. Here I am being so careful. Watch me mess up, sneeze or something, and just spill it everywhere. Uh, there we go. Alright, so we've got some white spirit. Again, as I say, or if you prefer to use the Sonsoda, Turpanoid, um, any of the other solvents available, I just use it because it's what I have and it works for me. Now, anyway, where were we? As I say, because this isn't completely dry, just using a uh, cotton wool bud, we can pretty much just wipe off the excess. And we just go around wiping all the excess wash off of everything. I know it doesn't show up too much at the moment because the gloss coat has made the green a lot darker. Um, as soon as we put a flat coat back on it though we'll get rid of that effect and the wash will be more visible. And we literally go over everything we've put wash on just to Get rid of any excess you can see it's all coming off on the cotton wool bud by the colour it's going. I'd be better off starting on this side because this is where I began. And so I've done every little bit and every surface of the vehicle. Except for the underside because you know as I mentioned before, yeah, I tend not to pick my vehicles up and look at the bottom of them too often, especially the tanks. Planes, yeah, maybe a little more often, but we are literally just going to Right, and, the whole thing. and again I'm not going to pay too much attention to getting excess off of the underside because or the lower sides because they will be getting more mud and gunk and pigmenty stuff on them anyway so it's, it's more around the upper surface where things would be cleaner We're going to make sure we get rid of the excess. And on some of these bits, I did puddle it on a bit too heavy. Got a bit heavy handed, which is why it's taken a little extra to get them off. Right. 
although that one's cotton wool that's far from had it but we just uh, run along get this side done and so this is one of the ways I prefer to do it although with the cotton wool but he can't quite get into all the really tight nooks and crannies so the other thing we do is grab a brush let's not use the one we were just using for washing let's find another one oh, that one's had it oh, it's on the way out anyway Dip it in the spirits, the solvent, and remove most of it so it's barely dampened and it will come off the model quite easily with the brush. Well, you do, you, you, I prefer generally not to do it this way because what can happen is it spreads it about and then you still got to wipe the excess back off afterwards so let's say I'm, I'm no Carlos Mendes when it comes to doing these kind of things I haven't quite or quite haven't got anywhere near his level of precision or talent um, see where it has dry that just makes it just loosens it up and then it's a lot easier to wipe off with the cotton wool bar but if you just use the cotton wool bar you can give yourself some interesting streaking effects as well the trick is to just be careful you don't miss anywhere We're going to be carrying this on over the whole vehicle. Oh, there's another burp on the way. Oh, there we go. I managed to keep it quiet for you. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that not everyone enjoys the sound of a good loud belch. Now, because the driver's hatch cover is cast, rather than try and pick out the individual details or I just basically cover the whole thing <laughs> so that the muck will sit in the recesses of the casting texture but not be visible on the upper surfaces Literally just, I keep saying literally just, don't I? Never mind. But that is what we're doing. We're literally just removing the excess wash. I did a bit of the dark wash on some of the tools as well, just to pick out the details a little more. You'll be able to see where you've been because you can catch the wash. So, especially as we've done this over a gloss coat, you know, with the aqua gloss, um, it will catch the light and you can see where you've missed bits. sure you got it on on the weld beads as well just to make that detail stand out and if they start getting a bit uh, fluffy let's say the cotton wool buds time to change them 
that will chuck those two into the bin. You can dampen the brush because some of these are being a bit awkward. Just on account of I think they've uh, had a bit long to dry. Well, for my technique anyway. The trick is to avoid getting fuzzies all over the model. They can be really quite annoying to get rid of. That's that. Let's get the back done. There's not a lot of detail here on the back. One thing I will point out though is with uh, the grill there and the grill there is I've basically just flooded the area with wash and I'm going to wipe it off of all the top surfaces we're left with the interior what's supposed to be holes in the grills anyway being shaded that in the light so I can see where I missed it's a little bit down there it's got that and just this side Oop. lower front glasses plate and the other side of the running gear and we're done I say you can just drag this in places like this if you drag it downwards any that you miss kind of turns into slight streaking anyway so all adds to the effect We are nearly at half an hour. Well, we're over 20 minutes anyway. Now at this stage, we're getting ready to start making decisions about the rest of the weathering process and how dirty or how clean you want it to be. In this case, I'm not going to take it too far. Um, I'm not a huge fan of massively heavily weathered. Well, um, I am. I, I enjoy looking at heavily weathered models. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I find if I try and go that route, I tend to go too far. I end up with something that looks like it's either been sat in a field for 60 years or has been dragged through a swamp backwards kicking and squealing against <laughs> in protest so let's just get the last of this off and see where we stand That'll do us. Right. Now I think uh, there's a couple, a little bit there. Again, it's always good to just have a quick look around when you think you've done, just in case you missed anything. Just trying to catch the various angles in the light. The other way you can do it is if it's not too dry, you can literally just rub it off with your thumb. That's what I do sometimes. I shall do that on the gun. Just to show. I can literally just... I've got to stop saying that. I've got to 
to stop pulling things right in towards me as well. <laughs> Can get the majority off that way. It's just fine, tidy up. Is nowhere near drawing places but you never know it's not too much of an issue especially down here as it's probably never going to get seen but once the gun goes in the model and once all the crew figures go in I've checked and most of the most of the interior has just disappeared so Excuse me. What do we have next? As another cotton wool bud hits the bin. Well, I think it's probably some sponge chipping. Before then, moving on to final assembly. Well, eh, maybe not. Maybe some sponge chipping. Just on the edges and the corners, just to make it look a little less pristine. And we might add some muck and mire in behind the wheels and up underneath. So that the tracks go in. Then, the, yeah, a bit of muck and mire on the sides, front and rear. Then we'll go with final assembly. And then it would just be pigments and a bit of dust. So, thank you for watching. If you have any ideas for anything you'd like to see me try and do, um, leave them in the comments. So, I will be getting onto that plain build as and when I can. Um, it'll probably be. Let's see what I've got in my stash, shall we? Oh, um, It'll either be a BF-109, a Mustang, or a Spitfire, I think. Uh, probably, yeah, maybe a P-40. I do have a Super Corsair there, but that's a racing plane, and I'm fairly certain I don't want to be building a special hobby kit live on camera. <laughs> so, yes. Quite possibly the Edward Profi Pack BF109, as that seems to be a fairly popular one for build series. Um, and the paint job's not too evil on it. Or maybe the Edward Weekend Edition Spitfire. Which is that? It's a Mark 8 or a 109. Trying to read upside down here. Back to front, G5, I think that is. So, yeah, it'll be one of those anyway. Ah, I did say I'd say, you know, obviously, you know, seeing the map, I've been painting something red. Well, um, I'm doing something at the moment that's actually going to be more weathered than a tank. I oh, know, hard to believe. And it's actually a Formula One car. It's been uh, garnering a few confused viewpoints. Um, there's still quite a long way to go on this. I will zoom in a little more. But it's uh, so it was the Tamiya F189 Ferrari kit. Uh, I've got to glue those back down. Which I've flipped the suspension upside down, chopped the rear bodywork about considerably, mounted the exhaust upside down, scratch built, and extended the exhaust. Uh, what else have I done? I made a stretch sprue kind of rebar reinforcing stuff down the front end. The spikes on the front spoiler or oh, front wing are cut in half cocktail sticks. Super glued on them with a bit of um, thin tape over so, so it looks like a metal strap with a couple of bits of styrene just. Um, just styrene rod 
slice thinly and put on to resemble rivet or bolt heads. I'm trying to think what else I've done to this. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's it's not quite together properly yet. It'll probably still fall apart. As you can see, it's got a somewhat higher ride height than a Formula One car should have. Heavily chipped, heavily weathered. But it's just for fun. I've pretty much made it up as I've gone along. And uh, yeah. So again, don't expect to see a car build. Oh, and the tyres, they are the tracks from a KV2 kit. Just literally rubber band tracks cut up and super glued around the kit wheels and tyres. Just because I could. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope to see you next time where we will probably be doing the uh, sponge chipping as I say and maybe the some muck and mire on the side walls of the little tank destroyer. Put it back in shot. And um, yeah, enjoy your modelling, have fun, be good. Rock on, and peace, bye bye.